So, let me tell you about chronic non-specific nasopharyngitis. Chronic in the sense the duration is more than 3 months. Non-specific because you have specific conditions like tuberculosis and so. So, this is a non-specific gentle condition. And nasopharynx. So, let me show you which part is called as nasopharynx. See, this is a, a picture and this part is the nasal cavity and from here the pharynx starts. The part between the nasal cavity and the pharynx, this part is called as a nasopharynx. So, infection here is nasopharyngitis and if it is chronic more than 3 months, it is chronic nasopharyngitis. Now, usually this non-specific chronic nasopharyngitis, it get aggravated especially so in smokers and alcoholism. And one of the causes being infection from the nose and, and sinuses, it can keep on irritating the nasopharynx. Now, coming to the main complaints. Usually, the com patient complains of nasal discharge and nasal block and this is specific for nose, not for the nasopharynx. Now, specific for the nasopharynx, they say they have irritation and discomfort and slight dull pain behind the nose. Usually, pain is not there, it is uh, irritation and di discomfort way behind the nose. And when you examine the part behind the nose, that is the nasopharynx with an endoscope, we can see that part is uh, red in color, congested, covered with slight pus-like discharge. Pus-like discharge may be there or may not be there, but redness for sure it will be there. Now, when you do a general uh, examination, uh, investigation like total count and differential count, maybe the values are high and C-reactive protein, maybe it is normal, maybe it is high. If there is an exudate or there is a discharge, we would like to take a swab from that with the help of an endoscope and by doing an endoscopy, the swab will be sent for culture sensitivity so that we come to know which bacteria is involved and which specific antibiotic can be given for that. Now, coming to the treatment, you know, nasal decongestion, uh, decongestion drops or spray. 3 times daily for 5 days and painkiller if he is not able to tolerate the pain, otherwise no need. And steam inhalation, this has to be taken twice daily, at least for a week or so. And steam inhalation can be just plain warm water, um, uh, warm water or you can add up something like uh, tulasi leaves after cleaning 3-4 leaves, you can put in the water, warm water, leave it for some time before steam inhalation so that the essence goes down in the water. I uh, will give you some, some alternatives, it can be either tulasi leaves or eucalyptus leaves or eucalyptus drops or turmeric drops, uh, sorry turmeric powder or uh, over the counter from the pharmacy you can buy Carvol plus and uh, or uh, Cinaras plus or tincture benzoin or Wix. So, I have given you 5 to 10 all, uh, alternatives, whichever is available with you, whichever is easily you can procure for somewhere, you can use it. So, stimulation you can do for some time say about a week or so, it will give you a soothing effect. Now, if you this being non-specific, we have uh, no specific idea what is going on. So, we will give a broad spectrum antibiotic for 10 days, especially so, so if the culture sensitivity comes positive. Now, not only that, along with this, you need nasal wash. If you are not able to tolerate a nasal wash, you have to take a nasal, you have to use saline nasal spray, salisbury spray and followed by of the 15 minutes gap, you have to use steroid nasal spray, steroid spray. So, these three, uh, two nasal wash and steroid nasal spray, you have to use at least for 2 to 3 months. And how to use this nasal wash? What is the content? How to use it? How not to use it? What is the problem with that? If you want to know, likewise, when, when we are we using nasal spray? What is the correct technique of using it? What are the, what are the contraindications? What are the indications if you want to know about nasal spray? Please type Dr. Zakir Hussain ENT nasal spray or nasal wash or saline nasal wash, you will get that particular video and you can go through it. Now, uh, most of these patients, they have reflex disease also. So, you better that you take a proton pump inhibitor as a pantoprazole and omeprazole also for some time, so that you get some relief. Not only that, this being non-specific and no specific cause, you have, like I have mentioned, you have to stop smoking and if you are an alcoholic, uh, you have to stop drinking alcohol reduce the uh, volume you are taking and slowly uh, uh, you can stop it. Likewise, you should avoid taking spicy food, beverages like Pepsi, Cola and all. But then uh, try to avoid coffee, try to avoid chocolate, uh, then uh, lemon juice, orange juice because all these are acidic. Your acidity in the stomach may go up all this can lead to reflex. That is why and you should have a normal sleep and you should relax 
and have a, you should relax in between and regular food habits all this will help you to control the reflex because reflex also can aggravate this nasopharyngeal this being non specific so along with this medical treatment kindly uh, uh, try to follow these lifestyle modifications too so that's a, that is how we manage chronic non specific nasopharyngeal thank you so much